Hello everybody, this is Ralph Martin from RJ Quality Consulting and in this video I want to talk about my latest blog article I wrote um, on ISO IEC 17025 Training for Laboratories, the Complete Implementation Post. And if you're watching this uh, video on YouTube, you can read this full uh, blog article just by uh, clicking the link inside the description box and you could read this um, full article. But in this article, I cover uh, really all that is needed to um, really get the laboratory staff trained in order to either get ready for an ISO 17025 external audit, or if you're a laboratory that is preparing to become ISO 17025 accredited, this would be a great article to read. So in this article, you know, first of all, I talk a little bit about um, the why training matters in ISO 17025 implementation. Um, you know, laboratories pursuing accreditation often invest heavily in documentation, but underestimate the importance of training. Um, training is really crucial for uh, laboratory personnel, especially the personnel that are involved directly in laboratory activities. You know, the staff may not fully understand their role in meeting some of the ISO 17025 requirements and how important their role actually is in preparing for ISO 17025 accreditation. And sometimes you'll find that procedures are inconsistently applied, um, which um, lead to nonconformities either within your internal audit program or an external audit should you get audited by a uh, accreditation body. Um, and then internal audits become kind of box checking exercises instead of real evaluations to ensure that your laboratory is meeting the requirements of not only the standard, but its own quality management system that is designed in order to meet the requirements of the ISO standard. So as everybody knows, or you should know, ISO IEC 17025 is the international standard for competence in testing calibration laboratories. Um, it is um, published in um, a ILAC containing uh, overview, which uh, you can, on this website, you can go and discover what that standard actually is. Um, and because the standard is recognized worldwide, training your staff to apply it is essential. Um, really, when, when you are accredited to ISO 17025, what that means is that since it is an internationally recognized standard, that your laboratory is internationally recognized to produce um, competent testing or calibration results, depending on whether your laboratory is a calibration laboratory or a testing laboratory or a sampling laboratory, which is what the standard applies to those three types of laboratories. So what are some of the common gaps in laboratory training? It's one of the things that this article talks about. Most laboratories encounter at least one of these training pitfalls, either over-reliance on external courses. Uh, sometimes these may provide general awareness, but they don't address your lab's specific processes, which is what, at the end of the day, is being audited. Um, uh, usually, sometimes auditor-only training where the internal auditor courses are valuable, but they don't equip the entire lab team to implement clause day-to-day uh, -day, uh, of all the clause elements of the standard. Maybe it's just how to audit it, or the internal audit gets the internal auditor gets all the training, or even the quality manager. But what about the laboratory staff that is actually doing the work? And then there's a lack of structured implementation guidance for the staff. Um, you know, staff are told what the clauses mean, but not how to actually apply them in their specific roles. Um, and, and really, to, to close these gaps, training should be tailored to your laboratory, focused on both the standards requirement and the practical steps of ISO 17025 implementation, which is really what this article is all about. So why accreditation bodies really care about training? Uh, the accreditation body is the entity that is auditing you to ultimately issue you an accreditation certificate so that you would officially become um, ISO 17025 accredited. 
Um, and, and really, this is recognized under an international recognition agreement. It's called MRA, Mutual Recognition Agreement, which is managed by an entity known as ILAC, which stands for International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation. Uh, this global arrangement means that test results from accredited laboratory are trusted and accepted internationally. Um, and accreditation bodies therefore expect evidence that training is documented, ongoing and effective, not just a check in the box formality. Uh, so what are some of the key components for uh, ISO 17025 training for laboratories? First of all, there's uh, the first one is documentation familiarity. So, you know, the standard requires a wide range of documentation, all the way from your quality manual, policies, procedures, and forms. Um, and, and this training should ensure that staff doesn't just follow these documents mechanically, but understands the why. Um, you know, why they exist, how they, you know, connect to compliance, how their roles are tied into the requirements, and how they are an important factor in meeting these requirements. Uh, two, the, the next thing is clause by clause understanding. You, you, you want to make sure that your laboratory staff understands clause by clause understanding of the standard, not only just from a standard perspective, but how to apply that in their daily roles. The ISO standard is divided into clauses four through eight, each covering critical areas like impartiality, resources, process requirements, and management systems. Effective training should walk employees through these clauses in plain and easy to understand language, showing how each of these requirements applies to their daily work. For instance, clause six um, on, on resources ties directly to equipment calibration and staff competence, while clause seven governs how test results are recorded and reported. So these are, are, are very important because this relates to their actual testing or calibration activities that they perform in the laboratory. Uh, for laboratories in the United States, this also means aligning with um, NIST guidance. Uh, sometimes um, the National Institute of Standards and Technology will have some guidance on a lot of the test methods or calibration methods. And NIST plays a central role in ensuring measurement traceability, calibration, ac accuracy, and standardization, all of which are essential for demonstrating technical competence under the standard. And by incorporating these NIST standards into training, uh, this strengthens the lab both in a compliancy and credibility fashion. Um, then we move on to item number three, internal audits and management review. You know, internal audits are important to make sure that you meet the requirements of the standard, but they're also important as a guidance to the laboratory staff uh, as to what they should be doing on, on, on their daily activities. And also management review. These aren't just theories or we're doing management review and internal audit to check off the box because we're required to complete those, but how do they benefit the activities within the laboratory and how your laboratory staff can improve and do a better job to improve the productivity within the laboratory, ensuring um, consistency and relevancy. And then competency verification. Training should not stop just at instruction. It should be a way to include, to a way to measure and verify competency. Uh, quizzes, role-based exercises, or scenario-based evaluations allow the staff to demonstrate their knowledge. This is critically important because accreditation bodies expect evidence that staff are competent in their roles and that there are, there are documented uh, evidence of that fact. So how do you build an effective ISO 17025 laboratory training program? Um, number one, you want to establish clear training objectives. Two, you want to break down training by roles, uh, technical staff, quality managers, internal auditors. Uh, you want to blend theory with practice. Um, oftentimes, you know, training is limited to just, you know, presentations and lectures, but, and theory, but what about practical hands-on application? And you want to be able to provide resources and documentation for this training that go hand in hand with these daily activities. Um, and, and really to have access and competence in document training, such as quizzes and ways of meeting the standard, and then a way to make training a continuous activity. It doesn't, 
It's not a one-time activity. It's a continuous process. Um, and then from training to accreditation, we do have a solution for that. We do have uh, something known as my ISO IEC 17025 Implementation Masterclass. You can learn all about that in another article called ISO IEC 17025 Implementation Masterclass. And you can just click here and it'll give you all those details. Um, and then where some frequently asked questions within this article that I cover, um, that I get a lot of questions. As many of you know, I'm a certified ISO 17025 auditor for one of the largest accreditation bodies in the world. And I oftentimes get quite a bit of questions pertaining to these. And I've kind of summarized some of the most common questions I get and then uh, with those answers and then finally a conclusion. And if you ever uh, are looking for help in um, how to implement ISO 17025 and would like a free 45 minute consultation, you can always just schedule a consulting call with me and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And then again, check out my ISO 17025 masterclass, which comes with all of the documentation that you need to implement ISO 17025, along with the training. And it even has an internal audit uh, quiz and an internal auditor certificate that you get so that you can have trained internal auditors, which is also a requirement of the standard. When you do an internal audit, the auditor will want to make sure that your internal auditors are formally trained, and this masterclass provides that as well. Um, so go ahead, and if you want to read this full article in a lot more detail than I've covered in this video, I encourage you to click in the, the link in the description box. And then also while you're there in the description box, you can download my free internal audit checklist and gap analysis tool. This is specific to ISO 17025. It is a great way to conduct an internal audit and gap analysis for your laboratory. And it can also serve as your internal audit record for an audit. It is fully aligned with the standard and all the requirements to perform uh, an actual internal audit. And on this page that you're reading the article on, you can just fill it out. Um, I'll also provide a link in the description box of this video where you can download the uh, free internal audit uh, checklist and gap analysis tool. Um, also, if you have any questions about this uh, material, you can go ahead and uh, comment on the video uh, below or also comment on this blog article. Uh, I do welcome all comments and questions, and I usually do respond at least within a 24-hour period should you have any questions concerning anything related to ISO 17025. And that is it, my friends. You make it a great day. This is Ralph Martin signing out. Take care.